Well, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Adventure Quest RC where we put the fun outside, inside today, again. But that's okay. Today is going to be the episode of putting back together the SEX10 transmission uh, with new bearings, and it was going to be with the new slipper clutch. Unfortunately, this is the only slipper clutch I have left still. Uh, the new slipper clutch won't be in until next week, but I don't want to have you guys waiting a whole week, plus I miss my truck. So, today we're going to show you how to repair a part that shouldn't really be repaired, but that we're going to repair so we can actually get out and use our truck. Because this hobby is about having fun, right? And sometimes you can't afford a new part. Sometimes you can't wait because you just want to go have some fun. So let's get to it. First things first, we got to take this slipper pad off as well as this plate and slipper pad. And then we need to resurface the actual plate. So the first thing we're going to do is zoom in so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is get this slipper pad off without damaging it. This might be a little difficult and you might not have all the tools you need. As you see over here, I have a razor blade, which that's probably going to cause a lot of damage, right? So we're gonna chuck this carefully. Now next we have a flathead screwdriver that's kind of rounded off. So if we go to pry this off, it's probably going to damage it still. So last item, as you probably wondered when we first started watching this video, why is there a wood tool? It's for this purpose. So we have something that is flat and it's relatively sharp. This one's kind of used, so it's still a little dull. But we're going to use this to attempt to get the slipper off. So when we do this, it's all about taking your time, going slow, and you can even use things like that razor blade to get things started. So, as you notice, I can't quite get in there with this without causing a lot of damage. So in this case, I'm going to start the process, always going away from you, remember, just as your mama taught you. We're just going to take our time and try to slide this off. So now what I'm going to do, this just really doesn't want to come off. But I still want to be able to use a slipper clutch. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this plate off. And then I'm going to get both sides wet. And I'm going to let it sit for a little while and saturate so that we can hopefully get this slipper plate off on both sides. So bear with me, I will be right back with the magic of TV, it'll happen like... Okay, well after letting this soak for quite a bit of time and using several different methodologies, this just does not want to separate. But that's okay in this case. I'll just clean this up, I'll make sure to wipe it down with a little bit of sandpaper, but the biggest piece here are these discs. So there's two things we can do. We can sand this off, which I'll do here in a second, or we can just flip them over. <laughs> that works too. But in case you flip them over once, you want to be able to use them again, get yourself a flat file. When you're using a flat file, it's all about taking your time, apply even pressure. You don't want to go off to one angle or the other uh, because it'll actually cause damage and it'll groove it. Uh, you don't want to be using the end of the file either because that's going to cause, again, a potential to groove. So you want to take your time and just slide, slide the file over the top of the washer. That's all you need to do. Not a lot of pressure. Just, just get it all sanded off. Okay, so now we have a washer that is smooth on both sides. It does look like there's a lot of stickiness still, but that's actually really smooth. That's just stained the metal itself. And if I worked on it really hard, I can get that off. But here in a few days, I plan on getting the other part. So I'll just be replacing it anyway. But for today's purposes, this is good enough. It'll work well. And now we just need to work on this one and then move to the transmission. Okay, now we get the transmission all apart and we gotta remember how to put it together. How do we put it together? I don't know. But, we will figure it out. Okay, so here are the bearings that I was able to get at my local hobby shop. They're great. They look cool with being blue and red. And they look fancy, but they should because this blue bearing was $4 just for one. This red bearing was two fifty dollars for one little tiny bearing. So, that said, those four bearings 
are $16. I bought two sets of bearings. I can't remember which one's which. One was like $17, $18, one was $9. I don't remember which, but either way, this is Fast Eddie bearings. I really like Fast Eddie bearings. If you notice, all of these bearings, like I said, it was either $9 or $18. I can't remember. But even still, regardless, that's a lot cheaper than these bearings, uh, for sure. I really like Fast Eddie bearings. I've used them on my RC cars in the past. Uh, they're decent bearings. I'm sure you can get higher quality ones if you want to spend more money, but as fast as I go through bearings, I'd rather get some more inexpensive bearings that are still fairly good quality. So, way to go, Fast Eddie. And let's go put this transmission together, shall we? So, we're going to drop a bearing in the small side. Push this through like it should be. Notice, please, that this bearing, or this bearing, this gear has a pin in it. So you want to make sure you don't lose this pin, and you also want to make sure that it is seated when you go to set it inside. I'm gonna slide this in. All right, feels nice and good. We're gonna need one more bearing up here. That's two, that's five dollars! Okay, now, we have, there should be, well that's the part I dropped. The one piece, the gear! Okay, now here's the medium gear, the middle gear rather. So we're gonna need bearings for that. The same size bearings. And slip that in there here, if we can. There we go. Now when you install bearings, these are pretty easy, but let me just give you a little tutorial. When you install a bearing, a lot of times it wants to sit in there like this. Now if you go to push that down, it's going to get the cockeyed and it's not going to want to come out. You're not going to be able to get it in. Now obviously this is a little extreme with this high of an angle. But keep that in mind when you're pressing these bearings and they need to be equal. Even this right here, it seems like it's okay. But if you go to push this in too far, it's going to get stuck. So always when you're applying pressure, make sure to apply pressure to the high side of the bearing so that it'll seat level. And you can kind of feel it too. So I squish that down. This little bearing goes in this little place. And we have one more piece. Now this piece takes those larger bearings. Same thing, see how that's crooked? If I had to push, it would just get stuck, so Let's make sure we get that in there correctly. Notice it's a flathead screwdriver, but the tips of the screwdriver are rounded, so that way it doesn't damage the seal and the bearing. You don't want to damage those seals, they're pretty important. Take your time, put the bearing in, apply a little pressure back and forth, all the way around. Perfect. That's seated. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Perfect. Now, this guy doesn't matter which direction he goes, he's the same on both sides. For the most part, there's screws on one side, not screws on the other, but it doesn't matter which way he goes. Stick that guy in there, and then put everything back together. And all of a sudden, we have a transmission that spins freely. Woohoo! Now just put the screws together, assemble everything, and you're good to go only it were that fast. Now that this is all tightened, we still want to check to make sure that the transmission still spins because just because it spun fine when it was pushed together doesn't mean that everything's not bound up on the inside. So now let's take the time and spin to make sure that it actually does rotate with it all screwed down. And it does! Yay! I don't feel any binding. Everything seems to be spinning freely the way it ought to be from both sides. So we're good to go. Now let's move on to the next step, which is going to be this guy. All 
Now when you're doing this, remember that when this tightens down, it's going to spin. I know I'm going to get comments where some person hurt their finger. So if you're going to use a power tool, use common sense. Go slow. There you go. Doesn't need to be tight, tight. Just the spring needs to be compressed. So that's tightened down. I only need to go two turns. So I usually go by half turn increments. So you have one half, one, one and a half, two. That's as loose as it needs to be. That should be good. That's factory specs from how it was when I took it apart. And again, we've tightened something, so let's check to make sure that it still spins, and it does freely. Yay! Now, to be honest, I don't remember which shaft goes in what hole, so I'm going to have to look at the truck to figure that part out, but that's not a big deal. That should take two shakes of a lamb's tail, or maybe four shakes of a deer tail. Possibly. Five. Okay. Let's go ahead and make sure you shut this so all the screws and bearings don't go flying out. Put this guy back down. Now the question is, which drive shaft is closer? And by looking at this, the front drive shaft is substantially closer than the rear drive shaft is. And you can see that. So those four holes right here is what we're, where the transmission is going to be. So we're looking at the two drive shafts. See how the front drive shaft is substantially closer than the rear drive shaft? That means that the long drive shaft needs to be in the back, the front drive shaft needs to be in the front, which translates, this is sitting on there, to this needing the longer drive shaft, this needing the shorter drive shaft. Now, I mentioned that we're going to use Loctite here, so let's use Loctite. All right, Loctite, I use TLR, you can use whatever you want, uh, I use TLR because this is what they sold me and I've used it for a long time. So, that's what we're going to use. Just takes a tiny little bit. You don't need to get all crazy with it like you're going to solve the world's problems with your Loctite, people. Just a drop. In fact, a drop is really too much. But since that's all you can get, there. That's all you need. Nothing more than that. Seriously. Alright, now... Slides in. Okay, did we tighten the part? I don't know. Yeah, we did. So, twist. All right, spins. Now, what I'm noticing though is there's a little bit of tension in this drive shaft where this joint is. That tells me that it's going to need maintenance here soon, so we gotta be keep that in mind when we go to order parts. We may want to order some more balls or at least take this apart and clean it. But for now, it's good enough to move on to installing the next drive shaft. Tighten, yes. Spin, yes. Scared me. I didn't think it was spinning, but it was because I was holding the gear. It's not gonna spin if you hold the gear, people. <laughs> One more thing before we install this, kind of a small piece, the motor! I'm getting excited now that we have the truck up here, isn't it? Okay, so now we need to install the motor. And like I mentioned before in a previous video, I'm going to go ahead and mention it again today. When you adjust the tension of your pinion gear to your spur gear, you want it to be so when you hold one, you can hear the, the, uh, the gears meshing together, kind of knocking on each other. This is actually too tight. When I rotate this, I don't feel any play. So I'm going to pull these apart just a little bit. There we go. Now I feel a little bit of play. And you can actually see that in the camera. The slight play on that spur gear. Now I'm going to tighten this where it sits without moving it or trying to. Sometimes when you screw the screws down, it moves the motor. So I go gently. I take my time and do one screw, then the other screw, then the other screw. Alright, now let's check that tension again. Still feels the same. Now... Rotate 90 degrees, check. That's a little tight, but if that's the tightest place, I'm happy. Check it 90 degrees again, same tension. 90 degrees again, same tension. And again, the reason you want to do it four times is because, and you can almost see it in this one, you have quite a bit of play over here, and then if you rotate 90 or even 180 degrees, there's a little bit less play. At least it feels, I don't know if you can see it, but then you can definitely feel the less play on that, uh, 180 degree mark. So you do want to check all four turns. 
Now that it's snug, I know that I can go ahead and tighten it down. Tighten, tighten, and again, since I tightened it, we're gonna check. Yep, same amount of play. Yep. Okay, this is good, I like this. Now, it can still spin. Yay, okay, I like this. Now we just need to install it. I can use my truck again. Woo! Okay, oh well, one little small part. Little detail. Gotta put the cover on. Not everybody reinstalls these covers, but I like having them. They protect things. Now, like you've seen before, the cool thing about these guys is all you need to do is slide these drive lines in. You don't need to fasten them or anything. You just literally slide them on. Might need to rotate a little bit to get the alignment on. The front slides in. Now the back. There we go. Now that those are in there, just got to get the alignment right. Oh, 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 oh no, the front fell out. Short go over here. All right, guys, now let's see if this actually works, shall we? Wait, is this not the right body? Huh, looks like a new body. That's right, I'm going to be painting a body here next Thursday. You will learn how to paint a body. It's not going to be any crazy paint job or anything, but for those of you who are new into the hobby, which is what this channel is for, I will teach you how to put a very basic paint job on your RC car with minimal supplies and able to put you on the trail faster and have you enjoy your car quicker. All right, so now everything is together. Now the question is, will it actually roll? I don't know. Let's go as slow as we can and as controlled as we can over the top of these little uh, rocks? I don't know, whatever they are. Not so we have any more control as we did before. Oh yeah. I like that. That is much slower, much more controlled than it was before. Oh, but you know what I can hear? I can hear noise in that rear differential. So that looks like that's what I'm going to have to be doing shortly. But for now, let's take a peek and see what I can do going up something a little bit bigger. And I know this is no rock climbing contest, but we need to see how slowly we can now crawl over now that we've replaced some bearings and allowed for that transmission to actually spin. Oh yeah, that is so much better. When you guys have some issues with your, your vehicle or if you feel like it's just not quite as fun as it used to be, take a few minutes, take your truck apart, look at the bearings, look at the pieces, clean it. Keep your rig clean. Your RC needs to be clean. If you don't take a shower for three weeks, you're not going to be very presentable. You're not going to function that well. You're going to feel kind of funny and you might actually catch a disease. So you still want to be clean. Your truck needs to be clean. Keep it clean, keep it oiled, grease the parts that needs to be greased, and just look over your vehicle. That didn't go as planned. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of Adventure Quest RC. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did putting my truck together. Now I can actually run my truck.